مقالة فورسايت and this is Mikhail Manasse, producer and host of the show. A British diplomat once remarked, foreign policy is what you do, referring to the substance, and diplomacy is how you do it. And he was referring to the method, uh, to the process. So what is the federal government doing and how is it doing it? Meaning in terms of its dealings with the external world. To answer these and other questions, with me here today is Ambassador Sasgadom, veteran diplomat, ambassador extraordinary plenipotentiary to Israel and Germany. He also served as director general at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for International Affairs. Ambassador Hissa, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Before going to foreign policy and diplomacy, we will start with the elections, which is the main preoccupation of the people and government of Tigray, which in some way also gave some discomfort to the federal government. Should this election in Tigray be a cause for discomfort to the federal authorities? Well, yes and no. Uh, it all depends on how you look at it. The, the current leadership in Ethiopia came to power as a government of reform. The leadership wanted to reform the PRDF, which you all embraced, to improve on the PRDF's uh, overwhelming success in Ethiopia, but some of the shortcomings. And this uh, leadership was embraced by the international community. In fact, they claim uh, they have worked with uh, this group uh, long before we came to know about it. Therefore, if the current leadership in Addis was as reformist as it claimed to be in the first place, if it, was for, if it is for the Ethiopian constitution and for the pluralism of the country, the election in Tigray should not create any headache to it. It looks uh, the leadership in Addis is not what I, what I just outlined uh, before. It has now proven to be beyond the benefit of the doubt. It wants to undo all the good things that the previous governments have done for the last 28 to 27 years. Therefore, uh, if he does not want to, to run and conduct a national election, and the regional government and party says we're going to run according to the constitution, it does not want to continue to embrace the diversity of this country as it is manifested in the constitutional arrangement. It wants to have a unitary authoritarian government in Addis. Of course, it is a huge, huge, huge headache to the central government. Over the course of decades uh, serving your country in different countries, you've closely monitored and observed elections, uh, also including uh, in Ethiopia. Is there any precedence, either here or abroad, uh, where uh, one region of a country um, carries out elections and not the rest of the country? Not only there is precedence, it is normal. Under the developed democracies, for example, a country that I have watched for many years in the United States, the state elections are uh, run and conducted independent of the, the federal uh, uh, government and in, in, uh, irrespective of the federal elections. Every state in the United States elects its governor, what they call uh, uh, assembly members, which are the regional uh, parliaments, uh, all the way to city uh, mayors, independent of the time schedule of the federal election. There are elections of uh, uh, states that coincide with the national presidential election, as if now uh, Trump and Biden are running for election, and some states are also electing their uh, senators or congressmen. Therefore, it is not per se that in every country, in a, in a federal state, uh, everything has to be done at one time schedule. In the case of Ethiopia also, uh, we have uh, a precedent. The national regional state of Somalia, so, uh, and also the autonomous cities of Addis and Redoa have their uh, elections postponed uh, outside the national elections of the Ethiopian uh, uh, government. 
uh, to me, it is absurd that uh, the rights, the fundamental rights of people to self-govern will be somehow be rewarded, granted, or denied by uh, a federal government, a federal uh, election uh, board. These are fundamentals. Uh, I hear people still saying the National Election Board uh, has not accepted this uh, request, uh, and therefore the regional uh, parties, so the regional government of Tigray, shouldn't run a constitutional right of the Tigray people. Uh, and therefore, it, it, it is simply mind-boggling to me. It is fundamental right. No, uh, not only the National Election Board, the Tigray regional government itself cannot deny the, the Tigray people, even though it was elected by them. It will be uh, history if it was going to do that, like all other regional uh, governments that have now seen their own demise. Therefore, I think uh, there is a precedent. It is a normal uh, procedure in, in out the world. I, it has nothing to do if it is uh, uh, right or wrong. It has something to do that the uh, prosperity party government has denied the rest of Ethiopia their right to to elect their leaders, and Tigray is becoming a very bad example to the prosperity party and the best example to the rest of Ethiopian people. This is this this is a, uh, the bottom line of the the, the, the problem that is being uh, propagated by the central government. And this bone of contention has continued. I gather that uh, soon the Federal Council is going to deliberate on, on the issue. The regional uh, national government of Tigray has made its uh, position clear from day one. And the people of Tigray has uh, endorsed it. It was their demand. It has consulted them. And yes, uh, there were uh, threats. They continue to be, but this is now reality. I think in a few days, uh, eight or seven days from now, there will be an election in, in, in Tigray. Uh, there will be a legitimate, constitutionally elected regional government. That will constitute uh, the executive and the, ju the judiciary and continue to, to strengthen the peace and continue to develop the region. Uh, it looks the PP government seems to be backing down, at least from its violent threat, where the prime minister came on uh, uh, TV and was threatening that uh, uh, if there was going to be uh, an election in Tigray, that there will be mothers who will be crying, there will be young people who will be destined to die. In his uh, Tigrinya interview on the same uh, national TV, he a kind of uh, uh, completely undermined the right of the Tigrayan people and say, well, I just thought you can use the budget for some other thing, uh, comparing it to drilling wells or what have you. Uh, that was an insult to the Tigray people, to the Tigrayan population, that uh, they value their right to vote, uh, and then these things will follow. It is not uh, uh, equating X number of uh, birth to your fundamental right to govern yourself. God knows where the rest of Ethiopia will be going to elections. Therefore, in that aspect, it, I, it looks like uh, the the government, at least the prime minister, is pushing the confrontation between the regional government and the central government to the federal to the House of Federation. From what we saw last time, and from what we hear now, they may be getting together um, to take some uh, what they call uh, nasty actions against uh, the election before or after it is done. Uh, but uh, this should not be uh, a confrontation. This should be welcome. It should be celebrated. 
uh, this part of the country, they are exercising their fundamental right. All the central government could say is, we oh, sorry, we thought the COVID-19 will not allow us to do this. It has a way out. Now we can run the election uh, while at the same time protecting ourselves from this pandemic. And therefore, it will continue to make mistakes after mistakes, and it should know better this, this is not the way out. As the voting day draws near, the election process is in full swing, the contending political parties are campaigning on the media. From your experience, how do you assess this process? First of all, I am much, much, much encouraged and very appreciating of the uh, democratic culture that we see uh, among the, the contending parties in this region. Uh, given the history of uh, democracy in all developing world, including Ethiopia, and given this uh, contentious issues that have nothing to do with fundamentals, but with uh, hate politics, what have you, I see, uh, it, by and large, a democratic culture uh, mushrooming in, 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 in Tigray. Uh, you do not establish a democratic tolerance, a tolerance to what you don't hear without exercising it. So I've been watching developed democracies on how far they go on campaign trail, how they posture themselves. Of course, we will learn from our experience on some of the things that we have to correct, but overall, uh, this is a historical uh, time. I am already delighted about the campaign, and the outcome to me is secondary. Whoever the, they got the hearts and minds of the Tigrayan people will get the votes. I admire each and every one of the political parties the way they are conducting themselves, the way they are conveying an alternative to Tigray, with all the shortcomings of, uh, uh, of uh, developing democracy. Because there are some quarters who say this election in Tigray is a prelude to independence, some sort of you know, breaking away uh, from the center. And uh, we also hear some voices saying that this is uh, more than an election, it's a referendum. So what is this election and what it is not? This election is uh, under, even though under a very uh, different circumstances than the previous five, in a way that there is a government in Addis that wanted to get rid of the constitutional framework of the country. And this election is the sixth election, as was well there was the fifth election, but fundamentally also defending the constitution of the country. Uh, there is now a real threat uh, to the constitution of Ethiopia by the PP party, by the PP government. And therefore, it is unique in a way when the central government have said no election, the constitution is being eroded, uh, this regional government and regional parties have said, not only we will exercise our constitutional right, we will stand in defense of the national constitution. A constitution is not only to Tigray, but to everyone. This is, a, as far as I am concerned, the fundamental difference is the, the timing and the way the election is done. Uh, the election is done under the supervision of a regional electoral commission. This is also part of exercising democracy. That is how you build self-administration. What is not is, this is not a, a prelude to, to independence or to secession. Why? Secession or independence or what have you does not come because you run an election. Uh, if the Tigrayan people were to exercise Article 39, it is there. It was there, it will be there. As far as I know, it will continue to be there so long as this Ethiopia is continue, going to continue accommodating all of us. Therefore, yes, they, I have heard, uh, especially the, uh, the, the, the Arad Kilo people are saying, look, we have to do something, uh, otherwise 
Tigray is going to secede, and that's why they're doing this election now. I don't, uh, I don't see it. Uh, no. There is a party in Tigray that is uh, campaigning for an independence, for an independent Tigray. Even that party says, I will opt for this through the constitutional means. There will be a, a government in Ethiopia, and if the Tigray people were going to, 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 to elect this uh, party, and it goes through the constitutional, fundamentally, it is every, every nation, uh, nationality's uh, constitutional right to do this. But this is, as far as I am concerned, a cheap political uh, campaign, uh, simply uh, to uh, kind of uh, undermine what is really exciting uh, 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 campaign and election taking place in Tigray. That's all the whole thing. They know, they know better, better than anybody else that at this particular juncture, there is no such thing as secession or uh, getting ready to secession. And I'm saying this because we believe uh, that uh, Tigray people fundamentally wanted to, to see this union continue. Will there be a day where uh, everybody or one of us, some of us will, will say no more, we cannot uh, live under this uh, umbrella? It's possible. As of today, it's being entertained as a mainstream in Tigray. But the election itself has nothing to do with secession or independence, uh, whatever they want to call it. Having said this, what happens next? Well, after the election, it goes without saying, as I said earlier, there will be a legitimate government in Tigray with all uh, the trappings of a legitimate government, with all its uh, uh, judiciary and executive and what have you. Uh, as to the rest of Ethiopia, I am afraid uh, after this election, it will be more or less the same. Uh, and if you're asking me what happens after that, I think what happens after them is what we are saying today. The roadmap that has been put by many, including the Tigray uh, government and the political parties in Tigray, is for the uh, all stakeholders, all political parties, original uh, parties and uh, those that, are, that have uh, a stake in this country of ours have to come to a national dialogue and uh, sort out a way forward, including the ruling party, the uh, PP, as one participant. The only difference is, from what I see, the Tigray uh, parties the Tigrayan parties and Tigray government, whoever is in the parliament and outside the parliament, they will be in a better position, in a better posture to contribute to the national dialogue as a legitimate and newly elected uh, party or parties with a mandate of the Tigray people. That is a strength. And it should be also welcomed by other, par by other parties throughout the country. Therefore. In, in terms of uh, Ethiopia as a whole, nothing has changed. Uh, the uh, regional government and the ruling party till now hasn't said once we, we are elected, we are, not, we are going to change our mind uh, about the national dialogue. It has said no matter what, while we do this uh, constitutional responsibility, we will also be working with others at a national level. So this, is, this is what I see will happen if the PP leadership accepts what is being not only uh, asked, requested, pleaded by Ethiopian uh, oppositionists, but even by its supporters outside the country. Very interesting. We'll come back after the break. And great strides. With ripple effects going far and wide. Get the perspective. Are fast unfolding from where history is being made, from where it has always been made.
Understand the values upon which mutual benefits and success depends. Have the foresight. Get it from those who walk the talk. From Magala Foresight, only on Tigray Television. Ambassador, you raised the issue of national dialogue, an all-inclusive national dialogue among all the stakeholders, political stakeholders in Ethiopia. Uh, the federal government had requested dialogue with Tigray. Why not? Won't that open up to a wider national dialogue? To begin with, uh, the I think it is third parties, even though the federal government may be behind it, uh, it is third parties like uh, the International Crisis Group and other countries that we know of uh, who, uh, and also um, national, uh, national groups like the elders uh, who genuinely uh, think uh, this dialogue will help. But what is the dialogue all about? The dialogue is not uh, about uh, Tigray. Tigray is at peace with itself. Tigray is better than any part of the country in terms of uh, uh, peace at itself with its neighbors, uh, people going about their own daily life, and not only that, conducting a peaceful uh, election. The, the agenda is a national agenda. Ethiopia is at the highest level of crisis by any standard. Uh, the, we have command posts throughout the country without the authorization of the federal parliament, the national parliament. Uh, almost all political personalities are in jail. Uh, people that have contributed to this country immensely, who have sacrificed so much, are languishing in jails, in, in jails without any uh, uh, legal uh, basis. Uh, young people in many parts of the country are being killed every day. The Prime Minister himself admitted last time on TV that in one region only, he has imprisoned over 9,500 people, only in Oromia region. And the government has admitted it, uh, by its own account, it has uh, 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 killed, and people have been killed, in the hundreds. Uh, therefore, when you talk about uh, a national dialogue, why would it be limited with, uh, with uh, a government in, uh, at peace with itself, administering here, and a central government that is in this array? So they just want to divert the issue so that, as I told you earlier, Tigray does not become a good example to the rest of Ethiopia, and bad example as far as the PP is concerned. So what are you trying to avoid? I mean, why not start it and then uh, include, as you go along, all other actors? Because by, 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 by many standards, including the international community, Tigray is now the only uh, organic self-administrative region that can withstand the central government. Otherwise, it will just be like, like, like the rest of them. Therefore, I guess then the, the PP will have a heyday to do whatever it feels here in Tigray as much as it is the rest of the country. The issue is we need, the government has failed to deliver, central government. We need a national consensus, how to get out of this mess, and it is beyond beyond the ability and the capacity of either the TPLF nor that of the PP, nor jointly both of them, even if they were going to sit down today, they will not solve anything. 
After all, the problem is national. Why would the, what would the TPLF say in terms of what is happening in the South, in Oromia, in the rest of the country? It can only talk about its region, and fundamentally it is known that we should go forward by uh, creating a national uh, forum, a dialogue, uh, establishing some kind of arrangement to get us through this transition period. That, by itself, calls upon all uh, stakeholders, especially at this particular time, where those that are, are the hearts and the minds of the uh, many Ethiopians are put in jail. It will be a betrayal to a country and to oneself if the TPLF was going to sit down and talk with the PP, when the PP have put so many people that, has, that have a different view as much as the TPLF does in jail. So for first of all, these people have to come uh, to, to, to let go. They are political prisoners. There has to be a neutral uh, uh, ground for all of us to sit and talk about our country. That concerns each and every one of these parties, and that will be a way forward. For, for me, even if the TPLF was going to volunteer to sit down, it will accomplish nothing. For him. It can only talk about its region, and its, its region is already doing what it's uh, the best it can do. Uh, as I said, the PP wants to bring to Tigray what is doing the rest of the country. You've made these calls repeatedly. What is the outcome so far? Meaning in terms of the national dialogue. Yeah. I'm afraid so far the PP is in another world. It is, uh, uh, it can't see what's happening I'm, uh, in the country. Uh, I think it called upon a, a group of uh, what he calls opposition parties at the, in Addis, mimicking what we are talking about right now. It is insulting uh, not only the Ethiopian people, but uh, its own party members. Uh, that's not the way to go. What I hope is, first of all, the Ethiopian people are galvanizing along this line. Uh, it has no legitimacy in any part of the country. It is losing ground. Therefore, uh, I would hope it will realize uh, this thing is also way out to it uh, and accept the score. The other thing that I think is, until very recently, the international community has been giving it a false uh, support. Uh, now, uh, as I can see it, they are having second thoughts. I will tell you one example. Uh, I know outside the what you see on public, the International Crisis Group, the Amnesty International, Human Rights, and the other foundations. Uh, I know countries have uh, advised and even warned the uh, government not to take any uh, physical violent action against the election in Tigray. Uh, that shows you uh, how much they understand the precarious condition of the country. So much so, uh, some countries have even informally, uh, by the way, I. I, I want to put for the record, I speak here as, as an individual. I have some colleagues that I uh, knew for a long time uh, in the EU, and uh, they asked me a few months ago that what would the government of Tigray uh, think if you were going to ask to be uh, observers? And I told them, from what I know, from what I understand, you will be more than welcome. This was long time before the, the Tigray Election Commission even invited countries and organizations to become an observer. Recently, the same person that I communicated to uh, intimated to me that the EU has informally approached some people in the government, in the Prime Minister's office, if they will be willing to allow them to observe in Tigray. Uh, and you know the answer is, uh, they, the, the government will not allow the EU to come and observe, even though 
the EU people have said from what I heard, if this election is fake, as you tell us, we will say so, and it will be to your advantage to ask the, the election to be done again whenever you are running an election in Ethiopia. Therefore, they did not accept them. They, they discouraged them. So they, they did not ask formally, from what I know, to, to all, but informally. That shows you uh, how far the international community has come. The international community, including countries that are considered uh, supporters of the current prime minister, cannot stand against an election. They have their own suspicions as, a, as they will have an election on Ethiopia. Would it going to be fair? Is it transparent? How many parties are going to run? What does this mean for the rest of Ethiopia? But they cannot stand against a region that wants to exercise election. This is what they ask every country to do. Their population will be uh, asking them, why are you against uh, a region uh, electing its own, uh, no matter what uh, uh, the, the shortcomings of the election are. But the, the PP will not allow it. Not only it will not allow foreigners. I just uh, heard the other day, there were two Afar uh, political parties that were uh, signing agreement to work with uh, the, the TPLF, and on their way back to their home, uh, they put them in uh, jail in the name of quarantine. And they told them, this is what you get for going to Tigray, and maybe you will go back to observe the, the election. This is what's happening here, let alone uh, allowing uh, 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 countries from the EU or the EU as a, as a union to observe. But what I meant to say is the international community uh, in the beginning, rightly so, felt this is a reformist government. It talked about better elections than what the PRDF did in the, fifth, in the uh, first five elections. It proclaimed that not only to learn an election, if it's lost, the prime minister will leave the office the next day as if he has other choice. And he continues to repeat this. If I lose, I will live. You know, the, when you talk about democracy, it goes with it that you have to live. So they were puzzled. Why is uh, this region conducting an election when a prime minister so committed, an international Nobel Peace uh, Prize laureate, will bring peace and better democracy, uh, better development to the country, and in the name of COVID-19, maybe they, they believe that. But when they see what was happening in other parts of the region, where they were not running an election, uh, they of later they realize, as I told you, uh, that this is legitimate, uh, people have the right, and they went as far as uh, warning and advising the government not to take action. This is why uh, in the interview I mentioned earlier, he says, you know, the, the, I will not interfere in the internal election of Tigray, but the Federation may do something about it. Uh, so the international community, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think uh, the honeymoon with the international community is over before it started. Really? Uh, but it was so late in coming. Uh, even the Amnesty International and other you know, international organizations uh, have realized, even started criticizing the government, uh, the federal government, for doing this and that, especially the crackdown on the opposition, uh, its relations with the regions and all that. Uh, why has the West been looking away from the problems for so, such a long time? Well, first of all, I think the West, uh, when we say the West, some countries in the West, especially in the United States, have always been engaged with Ethiopia, with the exception of during the, the Dirk region. Even with the Dirk, it tried to, to have some kind of relationship for a long time until the, the Dirk jumped to the other uh, socialist communist uh, camp. Uh, to, be, to, to, to be fair to them, uh, they thought, in addition to delivering to what they consider their national interest, the previous government of APRDF did work with the West, but 
on its own terms. It asserted its own uh, policy space, and through time, uh, they were willing to support us because we delivered uh, on what is important to the international community. That is, we were at peace with ourselves and we delivered peace to our neighbors. We became the fourth largest peacekeeper in the world, even though we our responsibility though is in Africa. We were the number one, if not the only one uh, country in this part of the region, in the world, who stood against international terrorism and became effective. So we delivered on this for our own sake and also uh, for the international community. Uh, they benefited from it. And also we benefited uh, from the well-managed of development aid. They were reluctant at first, but whatever they give us, they see it on the ground. But we are our own differences. We are our own uh, political differences, ideologically, what have you, foreign policy asserts. Therefore, they have, uh, they, they have uh, some reservations about the APRDF uh, government, which I fully understand, and rightly so. And we also stood our ground. This new leadership came first promising to deliver their interest. Ethiopia's national interest was secondary for all practical purposes. And it, it was bent on destroying everything and everything, APRDF, including the most acclaimed and successful foreign uh, relations, foreign, by any standard. Uh, Therefore, when he said, we're going to deliver what you wanted to us, especially in terms of our ideological thinking. Ethiopia has, before that, based on a developmental state, we said, all are our friends and none of our, our enemies. We cater to where we want to, to help us. But this new leadership came and said, we're going to be looking for, towards uh, Washington consensus which was a defunct uh, as far as we're concerned. Therefore, if you, do, if, you, if you have their interest, while at the same time preaching more democracy, more development, mm, more political space in Ethiopia, we warned them in the beginning, but it's understandable that they buy this. So it took some time because if a country is uh, a government has failed internally, it could never ever deliver anywhere. Uh, therefore, even now, uh, they realize they will lose both. That Ethiopia could be uh, uh, disintegrating at the level where it will be unmanageable, uh, uh, worse than before in terms of their for their, their, their prescription in terms of political polarity, whatever. At the same time, this government may not continue to deliver what it promised to them. Uh, therefore, I think we have, we, I personally have to, 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 to appreciate that even today, given the level of uh, public relations and propaganda by the PP, the, 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 the international community uh, can pass that and uh, realize they are supporting the wrong guy in the wrong government, and they want us to get out of this. As I told you earlier, people are from being, what is this happening in Tigray? They are saying, can we come and observe, and that the central government should, should deal with the rest of Ethiopia and if the rest of Ethiopia was as peaceful and as orderly as Tigray, then it is even better to look forward to another level of uh, political dialogue. So they, they see, they, they realize, they still haven't, uh, uh, you know, uh, cut off their relationship with the government because they want to reform it. They want to give it a life. 
And this is uh, fundamentally our responsibility. It is, at the end of the day, the responsibility of we Ethiopians, either to bring this uh, leadership uh, to sense, or to get rid of us, as we did in the past. The only thing we ask of the international community is not to give undue uh, hope that uh, if they are, uh, like in the beginning, uh, received with red carpets in Washington and London, it, it will have this false uh, hope that it can, it can sustain itself in Ethiopia. That now has been a clear message to, to the uh, Prosperity Party. Get your acts together domestically if you're going to work with the international community. Uh, Ambassador Fusaskidom, thank you very much for taking the time and uh, for giving us this very informative and elaborate uh, interview. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Well, we have come to the end of the interview. Until we meet in my next edition, this is goodbye from me and the technical crew. <laughs>